Hey guys, this is Woodworker Royer, and I'm back. Um, I've never done this before, but I'm going to show you a quick kind of build that I'm doing. I don't know. 100% um, free stainless steel indestructible table build um, will probably be something along the lines of what I title this. Because clickbait exists, and I may as well just join the, the rest of the gang that's doing it. So, um, this is actually literally 100% free. Uh, you probably can't do it, build it for this, but I can. Um, because I've worked at several jobs that give me just junk that they're throwing out. Well, stuff that, stuff that they consider junk that they're throwing out. I take it home out of the dumpster, and I repurpose it to be something actually useful. Um, the particular job that I'm working at right now is maintenance at a hotel, and apparently they think a lot of things that I think are cool are junk. So, I get a bunch of stuff that I think is cool for free. Um, so, anyway. So, this stainless steel table uh, top came with some brackets um, and was free to me from a different job. And... As I recall, I th I don't remember if I know that this came from the kitchen or if that's like the only place that they would have had stainless steel stuff, so I assumed it was from the kitchen. Um, but I think that this was from the kitchen at the camp that I worked at. Um, I don't know why they were throwing away a stainless steel countertop but or shelf. I don't know what it was, but um, they were. And so I took it home. Um, now, I don't know who made this. I have no idea. There's no maker's mark or anything on it that I saw. Um, but the brackets, they've got stainless steel brackets, which are actually... You can see sticking right there. Yeah, I mean, you can't really see them, but that's the two things sticking up right there are the brackets that were on this. They were mounted with double-sided mounting tape. If you don't know what that is, it's basically double-sided tape, but instead of being plastic, it's foam-based. And I've never liked it. It's a pain. If if it works, which I've never found the brand that actually does work, if it works, it's an absolute nightmare to remove from anything because it's foam and it just disintegrates. So they had that those attached, um, which in a kitchen environment apparently is a terrible idea and is apparently even a worse idea. Um, or it seems like a terrible idea to me in a kitchen environment because moisture exists. Um, but apparently is extremely bad when you put it outside and let it get rained on because the foam and the adhesive just dies. Um, the rain and the heat and the sun uh, kill everything. And so the foam died. The stainless steel uh, was fine because it's stainless steel. Um, and so now I have brackets and a tabletop that are separate. So the tabletop I frequently will put right here on my workbench to protect it from whatever as I'm working on stuff. But since I have this nice frame that I got at my current job, and I've got random pieces of pallet wood that I also got at my current job, also for free. This was the stainless steel top was free as well. Um, I'm going to build a free table um, because you can never have enough tables, um, even when your shop looks like this. And there's literally a little teeny tiny walkway out to the garage, or through the garage, I should say. Um, obviously. This whole area can be kind of cleaned up once this is built. Um, what I'm thinking, I'm going to kind of mess around with how this works. This has a bull nose on the front of it. I'm trying not to have this fall off, but you can see right there what that looks like. You can also see the structure of this. There's two crossbars going along there, and then there's one about six inches low on this side that kind of sticks out. I don't know how I want to have this set up 
this tabletop is not wide enough to go the way I would want it to, which is from the outside of this post all the way across over here to the outside of this one. It's just wide enough to barely sit on this piece here and the corresponding piece that's right here. Um, so it's, it's not quite big enough to do it on its own. Therefore, I have to have something under it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start collecting pallet wood because we just toss them. I'm going to start collecting nice uh, oak or whatever hardwood pallet wood that they have. Um, taking that home and basically building a tabletop out of that for this. Um, I've got hand planes and stuff, so I've got all the equipment to do that. Um, the, maybe the top layer of that is actually going to get planed. Everything else is just going to be completely you know, whatever came off the pallet is going to go on to the, onto the tabletop. Originally I was thinking just one layer, just, you know, slats that are stacked, you know, like this. Um, now I'm kind of thinking, you know, now that I'm saying it right now, I'm kind of thinking about it. Well, maybe, maybe I ought to have, you know, slats and then slats and then another slats. And then I get a nice thick, fat thing that's just you know i put a bunch of i dry it i dry all the wood out here um i put a bunch of uh tight bond on it when i when i clamp it or glue it and everything i have to clamp it too so that's a problem um but if i could find enough stuff to weigh it down um and clamp that it would actually make a really nice tabletop um as far as durability goes, I'm probably not going to do that. I'll probably just end up putting the slats across or maybe just putting them on the floor, putting a bunch of glue across them, putting the other things on there, nailing them together, stapling them or whatever, and then doing that for however many layers I do, um, and make kind of a, you know, self clamping quote unquote table. I'm not really that worried about it. I don't think that, I mean, I know, what I'm going to be doing on this, it doesn't matter what it looks like at all. The only part of it that is going to matter to me at all is um, that it's relatively flat. So when I put something on it, like a drill bit or something like that, it doesn't go, you know, fall into some crevice of the thing and get lost or just, you know, fly off the side of it because it's so uneven or whatever. Um, I'll screw all that down to the table, um, and then this will be able to just sit on top of it. I think I would like to have something on here that this can either hook onto and hang, or maybe on the end that it can just stand in vertically, just to kind of store this, because it just kind of hangs out someplace, wherever it happens to live. Um, and if I'm going to have this in here anyway, I may as well have, and this is where it's going to be, I may as well have it all there. The other thing I'm thinking is I may add, um, the nice casters, which you see right down there. Um, I may add a set of those on here, but those are like 20 bucks a piece now. They were like 10 or 15 when I built this table saw, um, cart. So they were never cheap. But now they're they're just a stupid, stupid expensive, and they come in little tiny boxes of like four. Or I mean, they're not they're not very small boxes, but they come in boxes of like four at Home Depot, and there's always like one or two or none. You know, for whatever reason, I don't know. I don't know if people buy them that often, or if they never buy them, and so Home Depot never stocks them, or if they you know who knows what. Um. So I don't know what the deal is there, but, um, those are the only ones I will buy is the red non-marring casters from Home Depot. I'm sure there are other casters in the world that are good, but as far as what Home Depot sells, those are the best. Um, they're basically the most expensive ones you can get. Um, they're double locking, which means that they lock the rotation of the caster as well as the spinning of the wheel. Um, and the reason you want that, especially for a workbench uh, system, 
is if you are um, doing any sort of, you know, for instance, if you're doing anything with a vice or something like that, even if you're not hammering on it or something like that, um, you want that whole system to not wiggle around. This wiggles way too much to be good for hand uh, work, which is kind of weird. You'd think it would be the other way around. But hand woodworking with like hand planes and all that stuff, you'd need a very, very solid surface that doesn't move. Um, in fact, when you build a, a workbench for hand woodworking, you essentially want a, you know, like if you could have a concrete slab, that wouldn't be a bad thing. You know, a concrete slab that weighed as much as your car would not be a bad work surface for, for woodworking. In fact, I'm really surprised I've never seen anybody do that. Hmm. Anyway, maybe that's another video I do. <laughs> um, I'll have to have my permanent, like, forever home before I do that. Because, you know, having a slab of concrete in your in your uh, garage is not really a great selling point for most realtors. <laughs> but anyway, um, on second thought with this, I am not going to put those wheels on it for two reasons. For one thing, because I don't want to spend 80 bucks on we on four wheels. Um, and for another thing, because I'm going to probably mount a vice or something to this, since this doesn't take up the entire length of this, I could put a vice right over here. This is very stable. And so, and it's, pr I mean, it's decently heavy without anything, basically without anything on it. I mean, this isn't light, but this is fairly heavy on its own. Um, it's good thick steel. Um, so I don't really see that there's going to be a big issue with, um, really anything with it. Um, the only thing I need to check, um, it's got like caps on the end of the feet. It's been raining around here. It's been sitting outside. So I need to check it for if it's got a bunch of rust in there. I don't think it does. Um, and if it does, I don't know what I'm going to do about it. Um, probably just pour a bunch of, uh, rust, uh, killer down there and, and hope for the best. Um, I wonder if I could get a bottle brush or something shoved down. I don't know. Anyway, uh, we'll figure out what we do with this, um, later as far as the rust and all that stuff goes. But, um, that's my plan is build a wooden top that goes over it. And then put this stainless on there. Um, and then have this be kind of my semi-permanent, uh, like, restoration countertop thing. Um, the reason this is important is because I have a bunch of stuff here. This is This can go... I've got some random stuff here. I'm going to put another shelf down here, too. Got some stuff here that can definitely use a table. Um, you can always use more workbenches. Um, and there's just a bunch of stuff in here, like table saw parts and things that I'm working on, um, for this build, table saw restoration, um, that I need a place to, you know, just space for. Um, obviously that's not enough space because it's completely full. So when you, this is, this is a woodworking pro tip, uh, probably metal workers and other, uh, working people know this as well, but a woodworking pro tip is if your workbench is full of stuff, don't clean it off. Just build a new workbench. Simple. Um, and then you get a new workbench and then someday you end up with 15 workbenches, you clean them all off, and then you don't know what to do with yourself because you've got so much, you know, storage area for all kinds of things because you have a bunch of horizontal surfaces. Um, and at that point, if you have 15 tables, especially in this shop, you're going to have like a, a second floor, basically, which is even more space. Like, anyway, so... Um, I'm not going to build this tonight because I don't have enough. I've only got literally three of like probably 30 um, of these boards that I need. But 
that's the that's the idea here is I'm gonna collect a bunch more of these. I don't care if they're cracked or anything like that. They just have to be hardwood. And my definition of hardwood in this instance is if it feels fairly heavy, it's probably hardwood. Um, the pallets that we use happily, it's not like Home Depot. Home Depot and, and Walmart, at least in my area, they don't get rid of pallets. Like, you know, these these people are, oh, you know, go get pallet wood. Everybody will give it to you, blah, blah, blah. I've never been given a pallet until I moved to this job. And it was at the, you know, I had to ask them like, Hey, do, you know, do we, do we, uh, you know, send this to what, you know, you know, who do we, who do we give our pallets to? And they're like, well, what? We don't give our pallet. We just throw them away. And I'm like, you're kidding. And then I didn't do any because I didn't have a, a use for it. I wasn't really doing any woodworking at that point. Um, just the table. In fact, I wasn't even doing the table saw when I started this job. Um, I had kind of given up on it and just left it. <laughs> but anyway, so that's my plan. Um, and so in the meantime of this getting hap this happening, which is going to be probably tomorrow... If I get enough uh, pallet wood stuff. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is... Uh, oh, that's what I was going to do. I'm going to kind of set this up the way I want it set up. Which will do two things. Um, one thing it will do is it will show you what I'm wanting to do. And the other thing is it will let me do what I was actually going out here to do tonight anyway. Um, which is also kind of, I shouldn't say cool, but it's kind of interesting. Maybe, I hope, for you guys. So I will put you guys up here on the rack. I don't know if I filmed, I feel like I filmed making this and then I never sh actually showed that video. Um, you're basically on a thing that I built on my scroll saw. Or jigsaw, I forget which. Um, probably scroll. And it basically... I, I, I can't call it a ball mount. I, I'm trying to figure out what it was. What it is, is basically two cups like this. It's just two boards that sit up like this. or that shape. And they cradle the phone so I can have the phone at any angle. In, you know, like basically up 45 degrees or down 45 degrees. Um, which is really nice because I can just turn the thing, the platform that it sits on. And then I can turn the phone, you know, just adjust where you see on the phone. Um, and you can, you know, basically get whatever I want to see. Um, I can't do completely vertical, but I can do pretty close, especially with the white, basically wide angle lens that I have right now, um, on my phone. Um, I can do whatever I need to do basically. So, um, I'll get to this. This is going to be kind of loud cause I'm going to have to hammer on metal. I never really like doing, but it's kind of a necessary thing to get this job done. Um, which is actually kind of one of the things that I'm using a wooden top for this on. It adds mass, which is good. Um, but And it also dampens the blows. So if I ever do have to hammer on this stainless steel or on this table... It's not just going to be a sheet of metal that acts like a drum. It's going to be a big, fat bunch of metal, or a bunch of metal, a bunch of uh, wood and glue that's going to absorb some of that. Now, when you're hit, when you're really hammering on something, unless, you know, as long as you've got a backstop to it, like a, a leg or a post or whatever, that's going directly in concrete, it's fine. It's not ever going to have a problem you know, if you've got, you know, four inches of wood underneath that, as long as it's hardwood and it's not like something like cedar or something where it's basically a sponge, 
um, you're not going to have a problem with it, you know, absorbing all the impact from that thing or whatever. So that's not a problem. But what it does do is it absorbs a lot of that noise. So instead of you get like literally I'm now this is not really well attached or anything like that. Wouldn't be quite that bad. But the the ringing is a thing versus nothing. Um, and so, um, hence why I'm doing that. But anyway, get to it here. This wasn't going to be my project tonight, but I guess I can get started on it a little bit. All I'm going to do is knock the nails out of these boards. I think the nails are already ripped out of this one somehow. Um, and also that doesn't feel anywhere here. This must be the sap wood. This is like heavy, heavy wood right there. Um, get the cat's paw out and that's because of this part of it. I don't know what this is for, but, or I know what it's for. I don't know what it's called. Um, but the whole tool is called the cat's paw to my knowledge and understanding. I'm just going to get that one out for now, I think. Okay, well, we're going to do two things. Um, one thing is, um, I'm going to get the phone on so I don't go deaf. See, what's weird and frustrating about the way that this is built is if I was building it, this would have been four posts and then a, all the way around, all of these connecting pieces would have been at the level of this. But because this is actually for a vanity, I don't know why they did it. But anyway, they didn't put that. They only have it on three sides. This other one is... Honestly, it looks kind of like an afterthought. It's like, oh, it's not strong enough. We better throw another one here. And it's done, you know, uh, kind of situation. So, anyway. Uh, oh, some safety glasses. That's what I was going to do. Don't, uh, don't go blind over looking tough. Um, the, the... No table is worth eyesight for, um, or getting tetanus for, for that matter. But. Oh, that should be good. These are those uh, kind of twisted nails. So, um, they really, really, really grip a lot more than normal nails. Okay, well that one's lost. That one I just completely missed the bucket. That looks like it's good. Put him there. I do actually have some cedar I could intersperse with this if I need to, but I don't think I will. I need to. I already love this thing. One of the things that's interesting, uh, I can probably use that. One of the things that's interesting about the way that they designed this, or what my plan is for this, is because this is just a frame and it's welded, because I don't have a welder, I don't know how to weld. Um, I was literally in a welding class two weeks before I had to drop it for 
other classes. Um, because it was basically not valued at my school. Um, as much as my other, like, I needed a degree, and that class was not part of the degree. It was completely an elective. And so it was like, well, you know, I can get an elective someplace else and, you know, with something else, and I need to actually pass these other classes so I can get my degree and move on with life. So, um, unfortunately, I didn't get to learn welding. But, um, so that means that having the ability to get something that is welded like this and made decently well is extremely important. Um, I believe this is made in Brazil. Um, from what labels I've seen under the other uh, vanities that we've we've got, um, and they basically dulled the frame. They glue. I don't know if they glue or screw. I think they glue it. Glue wood paneling and countertops and stuff to this, and then install it in the and ship it to us. And so. Uh, the reason we're getting rid of this isn't because this is bad. It's just because we don't have the paneling. We can't get that separately. It's all one piece or one kit. So it's it's like, you know, you buy, you know, a Kleenex. You know, you buy a Kleenex, but you get the box. You know, you can't buy, you know, if, if the box gets shredded, you can't buy a box separately from the Kleenex. It's all one or vice versa. It's all one unit, um, even though it's two things. So it's the same thing with this. You buy the counter and you get the and you get the stand at the same time. You can't buy one or the other. Um, obviously, we could put this in and then get other things, but and piecemeal it all together ourselves. But that's probably cheaper and would be too much work for somebody in accounting. So um, for whatever reason, hey, I get free stuff. I don't, I'm not really that worried about it, and also. I don't want to have to piecemeal the thing together from whatever the Home Depot has at that, that moment. So, Hotel would look really terrible if we did that from what's in stock at Home Depot here, there, and everywhere. I love Home Depot. I'm just saying, like, you know, no store is going to have 117 of this thing and that thing and that thing and that thing and that thing that we all need, you know, that we need for this whatever thing that we're building. Um, to make everything uniform. So it doesn't make sense to go down to Home Depot and buy that. Um, now, if I were setting up a hotel from scratch, Home Depot would be my best friend because I would be like, hey guys, you know, here's this thing and we're going to buy an entire hotel from you in pieces and you're going to be absolutely rich beyond your wildest dreams overnight. You know, <laughs> but anyway, um, so back to this. This is one of the times they've got, uh, I sold them, but I had a pair of uh, Crescent brand, basically nail pulling pliers. And it was hard to explain. It was basically a pair of pliers. So imagine a big, long pair of, um, uh, of slip joint pliers, but without the slip joint. It's just a pivoting, like uh, like what blacksmiths use, essentially. Um, so picture that, but it's got a, a piece on the back of it. So picture something like this, but it does not have any adjustment. It just pivots in one spot. But on the back, it's got this big uh, deal so you can grip and then rock back on that. Um, and it's a, a lot more effective than any other plier design that I've seen for what it was used for, which is gripping a nail and then levering it out. And it was very effective when it would work. But the problem is, is I don't do anything with the size of nail that it required, hardly ever. I use brads and staples, you know, basically 18 gauge stuff a lot. And that thing would, the jaws were designed in such a way where it would just cut through those. 
like literally cut through an 18 gauge nail before it was able to pull it out. Um, so it kind of made it completely worthless to me um, as a tool, and so I sell, sold it. But, you know, this project, it would be absolutely amazing to have that. This is not going to come out well. It? Um, be great to have that. Well, I broke it off. Okay. That's why. Uh, these exist. Oh, wow. And that's also why steel toe exists. This just dropped and hit the very side of my toe, just barely. And it hurt, but it didn't like completely break my toe. But if it had hit on my toe, it probably would have done some more damage than it did. Um, so I'll, I may or may not keep this. I don't know. That this doesn't seem like it's hardwood. It's very very light. This other stuff. These two pieces are very heavy. This piece is not very heavy, um, and it looks a lot splinterier. So I don't even think this is hardwood. Um, I don't know. I don't think the whole thing needs to be hardwood. I think having a mix here and there of whatever wouldn't be a bad thing. Um, just the hardwood is better. I mean, it's free. I may as well have hardwood, right? Um, wouldn't want to have just, you know, any random stuff like, you know, a bunch of free stuff that's, that I got for free. Um, I mean, that's kind of the definition of free stuff, huh? But this is basically what it's going to look like here. Is something along, I mean, obviously, like everything put together and it's just going to go here and then like another row and then another row. But basically, for right now, I'm just going to have it kind of spread out a little bit so this thing can sit on it. Um, I think I'm going to have this, the, the table itself will be at least as wide as these uh, sides are here, the posts. Um, it may be cantilevered out a little bit on one end, just for like six inches or something, for something, I don't know what. I'm just building it. I've never had a metal working, like a, a table like this. So I don't know what to look for in it. And if you guys have any ideas for that, Put them in the comment. Basically, basically what I am looking for out of this is a horizontal surface. That's the main thing. But because of the construction and everything, what I'm looking for out of this is I want to be able to get a lot of work done on this that is hammer type stuff. Like I've got a vise, heavy duty, um, restoration stuff. So there's going to be chemicals on here. There's going to be a lot of pounding and, you know, wrenching and that kind of thing. You know, big, heavy. Uh, I'll probably do use this as, as an assembly table for the table saw. Uh, big, heavy parts, like full-on, you know, table saw parts and scroll saws and everything. Like, just whatever I need to that's heavy, I can put on here and I don't ever have to think about it. Um, that's what I'm looking for out of this, and I think I'm going to get that out of it. But um, what I'm look, what I'm wanting, I think, is this stainless steel top is not flat. It's got a lip around three sides, so I'm not going to put this on here 24/7. And also, I don't really know how I would attach it, other than like construction adhesive or something, because I don't have any. Um, stainless steel sheet metal screws which I'm sure those are expensive and I don't really like having like you know bumps and you know I like this being completely flat and um, I don't want to have any areas where there's a gasket because I don't know what kind of chemicals are going to be on here and I don't know what it's going to do to that gasket um, and if I don't have a gasket stuff something's going to get under there and it's going to go down wherever that screw goes 
and maybe cause problems. So, I don't want this attached permanently because the only thing I could use is liquid nails or something like that. Um, some sort of construction adhesive. Um, and I don't want it to be permanently affixed like that. Um, I like stuff to be somewhat modular. The table that you're sitting on um, is actually three layers. It's plywood, that's permanently attached. Everything's attached to that. But on top of that, you've got three quarter inch uh, MDF. On top of that, you've got quarter inch hardboard. Um, and the reason I did that is because as those layers get worn down, you hit it with a circular saw, you know, you pound on it with something, chips or whatever happens, you can easily go back and replace the two top layers um, cheaply as opposed to, oh no, this, you know, $35 chunk of plywood just got, you know, cut into so many times it's useless now. Now I have to go buy another 70 or 100 now it's probably a hundred dollar sheet of plywood um, to replace this what used to be $35 piece of plywood with now a $50 piece of the same size so that that was why I did this um, I'm sure all of it went up and it's probably 50, still $50 to replace those two sheets but um, that was the idea with that same idea is going to be here I've got a metal base with a wooden counter and if I need it I've got a stainless steel thing that goes on top of it um, Maybe I get some sort of a something or other to hold this down. Um, I could have little hold down clamps or something. Um, I might do that, but I'm not going to have this this part permanently affixed. May it even have some sort of a bolt on uh, deal where the whole wooden part is just bolted down, and I can remove that if I need to. I'm not opposed to that. In fact, I might do, I probably will do that because that sounds pretty cool. But um, the stainless for sure is not going to be permanently, permanently attached. But for right now, I need it to be um, on here because I am going to. Um, oh, I can't have it there. I need it over here. Because I'm going to. Um, put my evapor rust, which is back, of course it's behind here. I'm gonna have to get the evapor rust first. I'm gonna restore some tools from my work. Um, the people that worked there before, not to disparage anybody, but they, they didn't really care about the tools and they didn't get the best tool. Um, I care about the tools and I try, at least for me, and get the best tools. For work, I get the best tools that they will pay for. Um, because I'm not going to pay for them to get tools. Um, I'll pay for me to get tools that I can use there, but I'm not going to pay for, you know, just random stuff that's going to get thrown away or whatever. It's not to take any drive. So, um, ah, that's, I don't know. Um, that pail handle is very questionable um it looks somewhat okay but like this side is basically vertical and that side's like basically horizontal <laughs> very very much took an impact from the side at some point anyway um okay before we get into that let me get gloves on this is just um, evapor, not just. This is evapor rust. Um, it is basically completely safe. Uh, you cannot drink it, but like, why would you drink any chemical that's in a shop ever? Um, I think the fact that they have to put that on the warning label is just speaks to how stupid some people are. I'm just gonna say it. Like, it's a shop chemical why would you drink it why would you ever put that anywhere near your mouth like if it gets if it splashes in your mouth somehow you should be spitting it out you know like not no wow i'm gonna drink more you know well, anyway it, it probably had some kid drink it or something on a dare or something stupid like that and they figure that Hey, well, if we put this warning label on it, the kid won't ever do it again. Dude, it's a 
it's a dare. The kid's going to do whatever stupid thing he's doing. Regardless of the... In fact, the wording label will probably make it a better dare. Um, I don't know. I, I never did uh, dares. Uh, my parents told me never to do dares, and I listened to them. Never really had any dares that were that, that crazy. Like, some of the stuff they come up with now, like the Tide Pod Challenge, like, what? It's a soap. Why would you eat that? <laughs> that was a punishment back in my day. That wasn't a challenge that you did. You know, wow, I'm going to eat Tide Pods. <laughs> back in my day, it was like, man, you said something, back talk to somebody or whatever, well, I'm going to wash out your mouth with soap, you know? <laughs> okay. I mean, honestly, I don't know if that was, like, the most horrible punishment in the world. Like, it was didn't it kind of tasted salty it wasn't you know absolutely disgusting i mean i didn't like it but it wasn't you know some thing that was necessarily just depended on what what crime it was like if i if i ate a cookie and then i had or you know something like that and then, you know maybe it was worth it you know anyway um so, what all that to say, Evaporust is. Oh, shoot. Just dumped a bunch of junk in here. Evaporust is very safe. Do not drink it, do not eat it, any of that. Don't, do, don't be doing that, people. Not good for you. It's also very clear when it's brand new, apparently. Um, I'm just gonna get a towel. Kind of wipe up some. <laughs> wipe up. Um, just kind of try and pick up some of the junk that I just dumped in here. I don't know if that, no, it's not going to work. Okay, well, I just wasted a bunch of uh, evapor rust. Anyway, um, yeah, I can't believe I did that. I do believe it. I just find it annoying that I did that. Um, anyway, evapor rust is, um, a rust remover, basically, is, is what it amounts to. That's all it does. Um, this is a three gallon bucket of it. Uh, in this case, it comes with a um, basket that you can put parts in, which is really cool. Um, it smells oddly like vinegar in here now, um, which that is not vinegar. I have heard vinegar works. I've also heard uh, sul uh, sulfuric. That would work too, the rust would be gone. Sewed the part, but the rust would be gone. That's the important thing. Um, I'm not gonna use that. This is what I'm gonna use. Um, and we're actually gonna be using this metal rescue because I have it and I'm gonna try and get rid of it. Um, it's not as good as evapor rust, but it works. Ish. It's not nearly as fast, um, in my experience, but it's fine. So, what I have today is a box, a very nice box, of very uh, rusty bits. Just random stuff like there's Phillips, there's Common, there's nut drivers. Is that I mean, if you can think of a bit, it's probably in here. Um, and so what I'm going to do before I do anything is I'm actually going to take this out. I'm going to wash the whole thing off. Maybe take the magnets off of here because that that don't see if they're really doing much. Um, and put everything in here with the metal rescue. Um, and then on Tuesday when I go back to work, tonight is Saturday, Friday night. Um, when I go back to work Saturday morning, um, I will take these in and we will have a fun day because we've got all kinds of new drill bits because they're all going to be fine. Um, meantime though, I need some paper towels. This is actually really nice to have this. Usually I have to go and clean that off. And like I said, horizontal space, 
wow, you just build the new table and it's all of a sudden it's all better. Um, I probably should, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to wait to do that until later because there's no reason for me to do it right now. Uh, I don't know where my strainer went. I had a colander thing that I used for this project and I don't know where it disappeared to. Hmm. Parents get to it. Quite possibly. Or I got to it, and that's a scarier thought. They would put it in the trash, and I don't have any idea where I would put it. Man, I don't know what I did with it. The basket that's in there doesn't work because it's too course the bits would just fall through um hmm. i'm not foolish enough to go raid my mom's pantry and get her colander um i don't have a death wish hmm well we're gonna do it here and not worry about it well that one doesn't really need it it's already packaged but we'll do it anyway because it's probably covered in some horrible grease. You know that, that oil or whatever, I don't know, we even know what it is, honestly. That goo that tools come with, like the cheap, especially the cheap ones, they come with like this grease or something that's all over them. This just stinks and it gets on everything. And then you have to, yeah, that stuff. Ugh. I bought a I bought a couple things recently that had that and it's like guys really I know it was a four dollar screwdriver but it wasn't why would you put that on <laughs> why would you do that um this is uh, simple green um, I mean, you can read it, but basically it is a cleaner. Um, my coworker actually thought it was like bad for your skin or something. I don't think it'll hurt you. Again, don't drink it. Um, but I, I don't think it's like bad for you like that. I like, like what he was saying is, you know, what is it like, you know, I thought it burns you, you know, you need to wear gloves with it. It's like, I don't think it burns you. I've spilled it on myself and it doesn't do, you know, maybe if you, you know, are working in it a long time, you know, maybe it does something, but I've never heard of it, like, doing anything bad to you. And I don't buy stuff that does stuff bad to me, if I can avoid it. If I do buy something like that and use it, then I'm very careful with it, because I, like, you know, I like my limbs, um, not being puddles of goo, or not existent at all because they got completely dissolved um so i am extremely careful with chemicals of all types which is why i wear gloves around this stuff because i don't think any of this is going to hurt me at all um i have actually stuck my hand in evaporust before um which they say it, the bottle and everything says it's fine to do that um, they don't really recommend it, but like if you do it, it's okay. Um, again, very, very rare. I mean, that that was like once in all the times that I've used it. I love this stuff. Um, but you know, just be careful with it. Just don't do stupid things with it. There's all kinds of bits in here. There's old DeWalt bits that are, I mean, a lot of the, this, this one's pretty well shot, but a lot of these bits are like new. They've never even been touched. In fact, a lot of the bits that got put in here are, were new and they got put in here and now they're all rusty or, you know, partly rusty to some, to, 
to some extent. Okay, that one. That one's been used. Uh, that is known as a flute style slotted bit because it isn't a slotted bit anymore. It is. I don't know what that is. That's supposed to be some sort of newfangled drill bit. I'm joking. I, it was a slotted bit until somebody hit the reverse really, really hard. And the person that he treated it didn't do it enough. So it, it's basically annealed. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of these bits are going to be basically useless. I think what happened is they had some bits that were bad. They got some water on them and or you know something happened they just put random bits wherever so I've never understood people doing I I don't I hate bits when they don't work it's like when if it if it doesn't work throw it away there it's dead it's disposable there's no reason to keep it just throw it away other people do this where they have just random boxes that are full of stuff and they just get rid of it for you know they don't even they don't ever get rid of it and it's like just, you know, you, yeah, you paid 50 cents for it like 10 years ago. It, it doesn't owe you anything. <laughs> anyway. If anything, you owe it something because you're the one that bought a Ryobi bit when you needed a Milwaukee one. I don't have anything wrong with it. I like Ryobi stuff. I don't know if their bits are very good, but they're Actually, their bit holders are apparently really good. Um, their uh, their tools, in my opinion, are pretty cool. In fact, I heard somebody said they got Milwaukee and Makita tools, um, and they're locked into those those lines of batteries and everything. But the guy, he was saying that he was like really jealous of Ryobi because they have all the really cool tools. He's not wrong. Like I I have two of their glue guns. Uh, the mini one is really great. The other one's in the mail, but like they're really cool tools, and I don't know of any other company that has that available like that. I mean, I don't need any more drills, but and if I did, I probably wouldn't get them from Ryobi because I I want a little bit more power and everything. But there's a lot of cool tools that they have. Um, in fact, there's some, I, th I think personally, as far as cool tools are concerned, TTI has it nailed down. I don't think there's anything DeWalt has that TTI doesn't have, um, except the flexible stuff, which frankly other than the battery generator I don't think that really matters because Milwaukee has a, a table saw I don't know if they, I think they have a chop saw they've got a couple things um the uh you know and I kind I'm kind of in agreement with a lot of the guys where they were talking about you know 18 volt versus you know whatever it's like you know Milwaukee sh basically proved up until very recently they actually changed it with one of their blowers I think but they basically proved that you don't need more than 18 volts to do a basic job like a table like even a table saw or something like that well, now it's going to be probably underpowered um, in my opinion for that but you know you can do it and if you've got like a seven and a quarter inch blade or whatever you're gonna be able to do sheet goods or whatever it might be a little bit slower than electric or something like that probably slower than flexible but you know i don't know pretty cool um and then at least the battery is is completely compatible with everything else you have so you have an 18 volt six amp hour battery it's going to be an 18 volt six amp hour battery on every m18 tool that you have period um whereas you know your flexible stuff that's all fine and good but 
you know, you've only got, you know, in your 20, in your 20 volt stuff, you've got, you know, a, a nine amp hour battery and a 20 volt, you know, 20 volt, nine amp hour. And then if you put it in your, your flex volt stuff, then it goes up to, from 20 volts to 60 volts. So you have a 60 volt, three amp hour battery. If you go up to 120, you have to have two 60 volt batteries. So I guess it's still that. But it's just, it's just weird, you know, it's kind of, you know, like, you're not getting, you're getting your money's worth, but you're kind of getting a little bit, like, you know, okay, well, it's not the whole battery being used now, it's like this other way that it works, which you're getting more power out of it, but you're getting less runtime versus the 18 volt stuff where it's like, okay, I've got this thing, I can know that it's basically going to give me this long and it, the only variable is this tool versus that tool, not, you know, oh, also the battery, you know, the volt, you know, the, the electrical stuff is, a, is an issue too. So, um, not to say, I, I would like uh, DeWalt flexible stuff, I think. I've never used it, but from what I've seen, I don't think that there's a problem with it. It's just that as a DIYer and a home uh, not a, not even a homeowner, but like a, a maintenance person. I don't really use it like super professionally. Um, you know, that type of tool, like whole hogs and this and that and the other thing. So I don't see that there's a real need for that in my situation. Now, there are people who use that all the time. They need it, but I'm not one of them. So um, we're going to put... Metal Rescue in here, and I'm just going to glance real quick. Uh, light rest up to two hours, moderate rest up to eight hours, heavy rest 24 hours or until the rest is removed. Um, metal may darken in color if not promptly removed from solution once it is de-rusted. Um, that is not a quote, that is actually me like coming up with basically the exact opposite of what their sentence says. Um, it says once de-rusted, promptly remove the solution or metal may darken in color. Um, so in other words, um, let's see, basically, uh, this isn't going to hurt the metal ever, but, well, maybe not ever, but, uh, what it will do is if you put it in there and you leave it, the metal will get darker the longer you leave it in there. Um, and I don't know what that's a function of, if that's, it's corroding, or not corroding, but like uh, adding some sort of oxidation or, ooh, this stuff doesn't look good at all. But we'll see if it works. I have used this before, so it's possible that it's not great. I think that this is a, essentially the same as Evaporust. Not as effective, but it's the same sort of uh, thing. There's, a, there's two or three different ways to remove rust. One is with a bath like this um, that is basically safe. Um, it's got some sort of chemical in there that doesn't hurt people, but it will attack oxidation. Um, uh, so that's a thing. Um, the other one is with some sort of an acid, and that can be anything from citric, uh, acid, vinegar, uh, different sorts of vinegar, different sorts of acids, you know, whatever you happen to have that can make an acidic solution essentially will work. Um, I mean, probably you don't want to use straight, you know, hydrochloric or sulfuric acid, but it would remove rust. Again, it would remove the whole tool, but, you know, the rust would be gone. Um, so where's your priority there? Uh, but... The other option would be electrolysis. I don't have any way of doing electrolysis at all. Um, I don't want to use acid because I'm worried that it is going to um, hurt the metal. There's also a thing, uh, there's Skyco Ospho, 
which is this bottle. Um, and it's basically a solution that eats rust with acid and then it stops and it actually protects the rust or the, the rust, the metal from that afterwards. Um, this, the Skyco Osfo is actually used by, uh, by welders, um, a lot apparently, and it's decent, I guess. I didn't really like it all that much, but I don't know if I was using it correctly. Um, and the situation I was using it on is kind of different. It's not regular steel, it's cast iron on the table saw, so I don't know how well it worked. Uh, the same thing is uh, Fast Etch from Eastwood, uh, like the auto body supplier. I don't know if it's auto body, but like auto restoration supplier. Um, basically the same stuff. One's green, one's not. One's, you know, the Fast Etch is clear, the Osfo is, is uh, green. Same basic product, as far as I can tell. Um, that uses uh, phosphoric acid, I think. Um, and it leaves a foss something coating, uh, which is why I think you use phosphoric acid. Um, but I think the way it does is basically that acid does something with chemicals or whatever, where it eats the rust to a certain point, and then it gets to, oh, I can't eat anymore, and then it at, or as it eats the rust, it converts it to something that's inert that the oxygen can't, you know, basically can't get through, and then it keeps it keeps the rest of the metal from uh, becoming uh, corroded. Now, the good thing about that is it removes the rust, but then it coats the whole thing with a basically a, a barrier that the, the air can't get into and it can't rust at least for a long time or for some time. And so for car restorations, that's really good because you can do that on a body panel and then, oh, something happens. I don't get to this for a couple weeks. You're not going to come back to, oh, wow, this is worse than it was before. Um, or, oh, wow, I have to do this all over again. And I just spent, you know, whatever on this cleaner that didn't really help me at all. Um, and I had that happen with the Rust-Oleum gel spray stuff um, which I refuse to ever buy again because I've done it twice and it does the same thing you spray it on the thing it doesn't do a very good job of anything it's supposed to do you use a night a whole basically a whole nine dollar bottle on whatever project that you're doing um, no matter how big or small and um, at least a nine bottle at least one um, and then you know, to get it coated or whatever, because the instructions aren't very clear about, you know, what well coated means or whatever their term is for that. Um, and so it's, it's, that's confusing. And then when you get done with it, you're supposed to rinse it off with water. Well, the problem is, is literally by the time you take, you rinse this stuff off, you get it finished rinsing and it uses the same phosphoric acid idea, but it's a gel as opposed to a complete liquid. And so um, by the time you get done with that process of you're done removing the oxidation, the rust, put water on this to rinse, to rinse it off and then um, go to dry it and then apply whatever finish you're going to put on it or whatever. It's already flash rusted everywhere. And so I had that entire saw cabinet done. It was completely rust free. I rinsed it off and it, within an hour, the entire thing was just surface rust all over it. I almost left it because it kind of looked cool, but it was sitting on its back at the time. And so it was, it would have all looked kind of weird, not, you know, vertical. If it had been standing up, I would have considered just leaving it because it kind of looked a little bit, a little bit interesting. Um, I still would have been extremely mad at, you know, the idiots that made that and then said, oh, wash it with the water because water and bare metal that has been rusted before mix so well. 
Um, anyway, I, I don't know who came up with that, but they were an idiot. Um, and unless they are just wanting you to use that and be in an, infl an infinite loop, extremely frustrated and just giving Rust-Oleum a bunch of money, um, they never tried that or thought it through. Um, if that was their end game, then they're worse than stupid. Anyway, um, yeah, that's my rant on Rust-Oleum. So, some of their other products are fine, but that gel rust remover is not fine. There's, is it is malicious, terrible stuff. Um, it does remove rust, which then immediately comes back after you follow the instructions and rinse it off, so... <coughs> yeah. I talk too long in the night. Get all choked up. Anyway, this is going to sit here. Um, electrolysis is basically you put some probes in the water somehow. I don't know exactly how it works. Never used it. I don't have the ability to use it. I have seen. Uh, acid work um, I've seen I've heard people say that it's really good um, and it should be you know it's well it's you know it's just as safe as anything else you just have to not, you know leave the thing in there for six months and it won't dissolve I understand that but also I understand that you know this is not cheap it's about $25 a gallon for evapor rust 20 to 25 or a little bit more, maybe 30, um, depending on how you get it, all that stuff. There's really no way to get it cheaper unless you buy it at a 55 gallon barrel and then it's like, okay, well, you bought a 55 gallon barrel. You know, like it's gonna be like a thousand dollars. There's different, There, I think there might be a 70 gallon um, as well, but you know, it's like, it, I'm never, ever going to use up that much of apple rust. Um, the only person I know of that would ever use that much uh, that's outside of a commercial shop, and I don't even know why a commercial shop would be using it, really. I mean, obviously, there's a market for it, but um, is... Uh, oh, I forget what his name is now. The guy that does restoration stuff. Oh, I forget his name. Anyway, um, I should be ashamed. I'm actually a patron of his <laughs> on on Patreon. Uh, not Metal Rescue. That's that. I don't know. Anyway, um, I might put it in the description if I can think of it. But anyway, he literally has a, fi a 55 gallon bucket or 70, whatever many you know billion gallons that he that he got. He's sponsored by. He's literally sponsored by Evapor Rust. He's got this gigantic thing that he's had for I don't know how many years, you know, and like last year he was like, oh yeah, you know, it's been how, yeah, I don't remember how many years, but you know, oh yeah, it's been how many years and I have to finally replace this. And it's like, he does massive, you know, projects where he uses that stuff all the time and he's, he doesn't even use it, you know, use it up in a year or two. It's like several years. Anyway. Um, so the, the thing that's nice about this stuff is you don't have to pour it out and then just throw it away. It's completely biodegradable. Both of these are Vapor Rest and Metal Rescue, um, as well as Simple Green for that matter is bio, biodegradable. But anyway, um, they're biodegradable. So the only thing you have to worry about is what you add to it. So whatever metals that you put in there, if it's going to cause some sort of heavy metal reaction or so, I don't know what. It says on the label, um, basically the only reason, the only problem with it is the rust that you add to it. Um, so they don't say what that means, how much of that you should throw away or how much you shouldn't. I don't know because they don't say, they just say that, you know, basically our product used or not is completely safe to throw away. You you are responsible for knowing whether or not you can throw away anything else that's in the product after you use it. So, is essentially what their label says. Um, so you you the viewer can figure that out for yourself. 
Um, I, I'm not an expert, so I have no idea what that would be, why there would be a difference. But um, we're going to let this soak overnight. Um, and basically, uh, that's what the table is going to look like. I obviously don't have the stuff to build it right now, or I would work on it um, with you guys. Um, I do have some cedar that I may use uh, interspersed with hardwoods. Probably not, because it's all pallet wood anyway. There's not really any reason to use somewhat reasonably good boards. Um, they're literally fence pickets. But, um, oh, I need to wash that. I can wash the, uh, the box out too. But basically what I do with this is uh, what you saw. I, I wash it off with simple green. I, I kind of dry it off or whatever. And I put it in usually Evaporust. I just have this, so I'm going to get rid of it. Um, I don't like it as much. It's a little bit cheaper, I think. I don't remember. Um, it's not nearly as effective, in my opinion. So I'm not really that big of a fan of it, personally. But it's fine. It works. It's not as fast. So, um, 